right guys so let's wait uh, for some people to join in and then we'll talk about uh, some things so uh, let's just wait uh, for at least some people to come in and feel free to like introduce yourself in the chat in the meanwhile uh, till more people come in so I'm just gonna take a little bit of like uh, water I hope at least like some people come in so what we'll be doing today is uh, creating like some resources for because a lot of people have been asking me like how do you get started with web hacking um, hey MG cow and um, a lot of people have been asking like how to get into bug bounty how to start hacking web applications obviously uh, ethically and stuff um, hey speaker speaker it's nice it's going nice I've been trying uh, like uh, live streaming for the first time uh, so hopefully it goes well but we'll see Maybe I'll uh, just fuck up somewhere. Hey, Eduardo, Eduardo, hey man. Dinesh, hi, Dinesh, hello. Abe, hi. Uh, is this the first stream about web hacking? Yeah, MG Cow, this is actually my first live stream on even on like just YouTube. So we'll see how it goes. Hey, Akash. So let me actually just put up uh, what's going to be the aim and stuff of this uh, live stream. So just the aim is going to be getting started with uh, bug bounty so if you guys don't know what bug bounty is actually let me just actually make it a little bit more simpler so let's just write web hacking over here so that you guys do, uh, don't get confused actually let me just write web application because a lot of people over here don't probably know what uh, web uh, bug bounty is. so I'm gonna explain that in a sec uh, all right Day, thank you so thank you so much. Best Python tutorials on YouTube. Yeah, that's what I do. I just create YouTube uh, videos on Python. That's that's my thing. Um, speaker, will you be using Kali? No, man. Like uh, actually, for a lot of things on Bug Bounty, I'm not like an expert or anything. But I've seen a lot of things. You can just do it on Windows. You don't even use Linux. I know a lot of people say, hey, you have to use Linux. You have to use like Kali Linux. You don't know what a Kali Linux is. It's basically, like a operating system just for uh, hacking. But I don't think if you're getting started, you should even just focus on that. Like, don't focus on other operating systems. Just focus on, like, learning the concepts. And just, like, your uh, web browser and just, like, some tool is just more than enough. Don't focus on uh, other operating systems. These are, like, just distractions that you don't need to focus on. Just focus on, uh, like, learning the basics of how the web works and things like that. All right. So, how to get an internship in only Python? Man, the best way to get an internship is that you uh, like help someone like for example like uh, I know how I found my first inter internship was uh, I live in Bangalore India if you guys don't know so how I found my first internship was I found a website of a startup and I'm not allowed to disclose the name of a startup but I started hacking it and I found some vulnerabilities on that uh, website and I just approached that uh, startup and I told them these are the vulnerabilities I want to uh, internship at least so I was still in college back then so yeah I like I started doing it a lot of a uh, lot like long while ago uh, but I haven't been following like until the last two months and the last two months I really got into like web application hacking because I just like started loving it it's pretty it was pretty cool which keyboard do I use <laughs> it's just like my normal keyboard man I, I don't like I have like uh, like two screens but I just use my normal keyboard all right uh, when will you start Django series um, I've been thinking about doing a uh, just a basic uh, like uh, making a short box or something like that uh, just a simple like even on like just live stream like me on live stream making like a Django website so I think I'll get around to that after this uh, stream how long will I do this stream I have no idea man let's see let's see how long it goes I'll so what what we'll be doing is um, we'll be compiling a resource list and we'll be looking at how I got through my journey of uh, learning web application hacking so that you guys can do the same and I'm not like an expert or anything so feel free to like just kind of feel it out and it's my journey so the steps that I took to learn web application hacking so I'm just gonna give like what even my credentials are I'm pretty good in Python but I'm not probably the best person to talk about uh, bug bounty so I'll just give you some credentials as to why you should like probably listen to me um, so the first thing is basically and I've been doing it religiously for the last two months. In the last two months, um, so I've earned around $2,000. It's not a lot, but uh, considering it's something new, I'm really proud of it. Um, 
yeah and i've been doing it for the last two months and i've learned a lot of new concepts that have helped me like understand what how websites work um so yeah that's pretty useful uh so yeah i'm not like the best but i can give you like a direction if you guys want on how to get started with it all right so let's see what's what's up in the chat uh we'll get started in just like a minute or two i think we have 47 viewers i think that's more than enough to get started um do you have any project ideas for beginners so manuals hey manuals so i think uh, the best way to get started for beginners is find a project that you love to work on so for example i have a series on uh, youtube a playlist on how to make a music player so like that start and it is probably the one of the first series on my youtube channel so i was like hey, I know how to code in Python, but I don't know how to create like all this software stuff like music player, video player, all that stuff. How do people actually create graphical user applications? Like how do we give like a like a user interface? So that's why I started learning Kinter and obviously Kinter is not the only way to learn it. Uh, but yeah, that's how you get started. You choose a project that you love and you just like uh, go after it for 30 days. All right, so let's get started actually. Increase the audio. Do I need to increase the audio? Uh, just hold on a sec. Uh, is it too low? Let me just get closer to my mic and maybe speak a little bit loudly so that you guys can hear it properly. All right, so let's get started. Uh, getting started in web application hacking. So first thing is what exactly is bug bounty? So bug bounty is when you want to earn money with hacking websites and you don't do it like in a non-ethical way. You ask the websites, can, you, can we hack you? And if they allow you to hack, then you submit your vulnerability that you found on the website and then they give you some money and that money is known as the bug bounty so our whole aim is not to do just like like not to hack websites just randomly just make sure that we are uh, hacking in an ethical way so hacking money uh, not hacking money earning money uh, by hacking websites so let's get started uh, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a google doc link and um, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to get into all the resources what we can do um, how like i learned the steps that i took to learn it so i'm just going to create a new google doc over here and i'll share it in the description after this uh, stream is done so let's uh, actually look at some templates as to what we can use uh, i had seen a template over here that was pretty good so let's go to let's scroll down a little bit Let's see. Mm, all right. So this lesson plan is pretty good. So I'm just going to choose that. And um, yeah, let's wait for it to open up. Let's see if we can answer some more questions in the meanwhile. What program am I going to make? I'm not going to make any program. I'm just going to teach you the flow of like hacking websites and how I learned it. All right. Uh, please save this too on your channel. This this live stream is going to be there. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be removed. Um, love your pie game and KVMD. Thank you so much. I would like to try a hack and bank. Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not, uh, uh, nobody like likes, I, I mean, I, I probably won't do it ever. But yeah, just like kind of, why would you want to hack a bank when you know you'll get caught? Like, you're not that good. Anyway, so might as well like hack websites and get paid for it. All right, so lesson plan, uh, let's just write um, web hacking. Let's make sure we don't do any weird spelling mistakes. Web hacking 101. Um, let's get started. So actually, uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna tell you websites where you can actually go and like see websites which allow you to hack. All right, so one of the websites that's really good is hackerone.com. So let me just open that up. And um, so yeah, this is like a website that I started with. And it's not the only website. So there are like some websites. Uh, let me just to make sure that there's nothing personal in here because there are a lot of private bug bounty programs that um, don't allow you to show like what you have uh, done on their website. So let me just hide that for a little bit, bring it back. So now yeah, you can see after you like make an account, all these people have like these public, um, uh, public, vulnerabilities that they are submitted and these have been like allowed to show to the public so you can actually click on one of them and learn like how these uh, people have hacked into a website how much they were paid for it so this is os command injection this is ssrf don't worry about these like uh, tricky names because at the starting it might be a little bit overwhelming so just kind of read through it see what's here see what's not 
And then what I would recommend is, so let me just open up our Google Doc again, um, getting started. Getting started. All right, so what we'll do is we'll actually just remove everything from here. There's just too much stuff which I don't want. All right, so getting started. And what we'll do is we'll just write down the names of uh, websites where you can actually go and hack. So first website is hacker1.com and the second website which you can go into is also known as the Buck Crowd. A lot of Indian hackers that I know are also like work on this website. Uh, crowdsource security, cyber security platform, you can also submit bugs over here. So and the third website is Integrity. And this is also, this is a European platform, but like people from all over the world can go and submit bugs. So for example, uh, my recent vulnerabilities have been on Udemy. I've like done a lot of, I think I've earned like around thousand dollars from Udemy. Uh, I have been hacking a lot on Udemy. So for example, if you want to know whether Udemy has a bug bounty program or not, you can just write Udemy and you can just write uh, bug bounty. And over here you'll be able to see become a okay these are the courses so what you can also do is you can just go to like hacker one this one just go to over here hacker one and go to this directory over here and just after clicking on it you can just search for the website name so let's wait for it to open up and over here you can just search for udemy if it's there or not so if you enter um okay it's not there maybe they they made it private or something but yeah you get the idea you basically search it over here and uh, you'll be able to find a lot of programs over here that you can hack on. So even Django surprisingly, so if you are a Django web developer and you find a vulnerability on Django, you can just submit over here. Yeah, so there are a lot of websites like Twitter and you can just search for it and you can find uh, whether they allow you to hack or not. So yeah, this is the first thing, like probably first basic thing that search for like whether you can actually hack on a website or not. So first of all, just choose a target. Choose a target that you use a lot in uh, your real life. It can be like Zomato, any food delivery uh, website, any uh, public, uh, even, I would recommend not go after very big targets like Google, Twitter, because they have already been like searched a lot, gone through a lot. So I would probably recommend going through like some smaller targets that you use a lot. For me, like uh, I use Udemy a lot to like see courses and stuff like that. And yeah, so choose websites that you see a lot. So first, first of all, choose a target that you use a lot, not big websites. And let's make this font a little bit bigger. I think it's very, very small. Uh, let's make it 18 so you guys can see it properly. And then websites where you can check whether these uh, websites are valid or not. Websites where you can check whether they have a bug bounty program all right so what we'll do is we'll also make this one bigger make it i think it was 24 right all right what was the font of this size 18 actually let's make it 24 so that you guys can see it properly all right choose a website so over here we are i'm just going to give you some uh, links that you can use i mean we have already talked about it so the first normal link is uh, hacker1.com and feel free while I'm talking over here to go and like check out these websites. So like just check out what these websites are, get a feel of them in the meanwhile and integrity.com, integrity.com. It's a European platform. This is also pretty good. So I mainly work on hacker one. So don't go and like make accounts on all three. So <laughs> make sure you just make an account on one of them and just focus on that. All right. So, all right. Uh, let's make like some kind of uh, where is the list one I can't see like how to yeah this is the list one uh, make sure everything is formatted properly uh, all right I'll format this after the stream maybe I don't know what's going on but yeah so these are the three websites that uh, you can choose actually let me just make it a little bit smaller maybe all right so yeah these are the three websites that I will probably use and I have made an account on hacker one so go over there and um, so yeah, this is not about talking about all the vulnerabilities, like how these vulnerabilities work. This is like how to learn them and how I have learned them. That's the basic idea. So yeah, choose the target, websites that have a bug bounty program. And then the third, second thing I would do is, 
watch some basic web development videos because you want to become a web application like security expert so you can't just like uh, be like oh i'm gonna start hacking give at least a week of time to learn about basics of web development and uh, i don't know what the name of uh, so i'll just give like how much time you should give to it on learning web development and where to learn it from all right so web development resources so the first thing i think this is like the so i don't know the name of this video but i think it was um, uh, let me just search for it um, what is the name of this video how the web works i think it was how the web works um, maybe this one how the web works i think this is a pretty good video uh, but there is this guy i think in stanford or something he had like an amazing lecture on uh, web development so, or maybe harvard let me just search for harvard Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this one, this one, CS50, it's amazing. Uh, this this is just amazing. So what I would do is like, I'll probably like this second video. This is a must watch. Even if you are like, if you think you are like a master in web development, it will tell you like what happens when you press enter on the URL, When you, what happens when you press enter over here, what happens behind the scenes. So I think it will give you a very good understanding of how browsers work or how websites work. Just kind of a behind the looks, how networks work, what happens like on pinging, what are IP addresses, what are ports, like all this will give you a very, very good understanding. So I think the first video that you should watch and it's just like of like very, very, um, like not a lot of time. It won't take a lot of time. So let me just copy the link address and paste it over here. All right, this is the first video that you should watch. So let me actually just open this up and uh, scroll down let me just go mute this up so that you guys don't have to hear the audio and any questions in the meanwhile let's see i want to hack nasa with html perfect perfect yeah we'll we'll uh, hack nasa we'll hack uh, the internet everything with just html no like you have to learn a little bit <laughs> yeah i'll hack everything um, so yeah, like I used to have these thoughts when I was just getting started, like, Hey, I'll just like hack everything, uh, but it, it's not like how it works. And you like not actually get like a lot of joy, joy out of it when you do it that way. So yeah, I think this is the first thing you should definitely watch and just spend like, uh, like I think one hour or two hours on it. You don't have to spend a lot of time on it. So I'll also write the time amount of time you have to spend over here, like two hours. So let me just bold this out and make it a little bit uh, like uh, a little bit bigger yeah so this is the first video you should watch just two hours and then you should go to like actually understanding what uh, what uh, like what html how html works how css works so all of all of that stuff and that actually is also very important so make sure you just learn html CSS don't just go and uh, go into just too much into it just learn it a little bit and uh, JavaScript JavaScript was really really important if you want to get into like web uh, application security so let me also max this out so HTML CSS and you have to spend like one day on each of them I'm not asking you to spend like a lot of time on it just one day on learning each of these technologies on JavaScript, maybe you can like spend more than one day, but if you're getting started, even like one day is more than enough, I think. So what you can do over here is, uh, first of all, just like actually check out um, this guy's playlist on the CS50. So if you just go over here on CS50 and just check out his playlist, he'll have like great videos on web development and stuff and how like actually behind the scenes web works. So just check that. And after checking all that stuff, actually W3 schools I found, I know a lot of people like, I don't know why they hate it, but I think just for learning like basics, like Python, JavaScript, CS, like you can see it's just right at the front. So learn, make sure you like uh, learn these, these technologies in just one day and you don't have to like go down a lot. Just learn the basics, like how, how like these things work, like how forms work. Don't go into graphics, don't go into like media and stuff just learn how basic html works just like this part introduction part and same it's if you think like any of these technologies is like complicated like if you go down html and you think it's too complicated skip that you don't have to actually learn it if it's too complicated just understand the basics and just go through it so i think w3 schools is the best way to just like get started with it 
So I'm just gonna write W3 schools for all of them. Um, I think that's the way I learned it when I was a kid. Um, yeah, so just go through all of them. And now, like after this uh, web development thing, after these uh, some uh, some time, after you spend some time on all of this stuff, I think you'll be pretty good with uh, like understanding how web works. Now you can get started with actually hacking stuff. All right. So the how like where I would actually recommend starting it from is known as this website known as Portswigger. So if you go to Portswigger, uh, this is like the I think this is this is amazing. This website is the most amazing website I have ever seen if you want to learn hacking. All right, so for example, over here, if you go to like this Academy tab, this is where your learning is, most of the learning is gonna come from. And there's another website that is actually made by Hacker One. It's known as Hacker 101, I think, hacker101.com. And if you go to it, you can see this website and there's this, like this video lessons over here. All right, so it has all these like videos over here. So you can also watch this, that web in depth. So start going through them one by one. All right, so make sure you just follow this lesson plan actually. Just follow, do this uh, web development stuff and then just uh, go to basics. So let's actually get started with the uh, web application, security, learning path. And now, uh, so first website is, uh, this is obviously Portswager. I think this is the best website ever. So, and if you go down, they also have like labs. So if you learn something over here, you can actually like uh, implement it on their website. You don't have to like, so you need some way to learn it, right? You can't just find insecure vulnerabilities all the time. You can also learn from Free Code Camp, uh, Himanshu, that's totally fine. Backpack Man has some knowledge, Flex OP. Vishal working, worked with the LAMP stack, pretty nice. What are the best books for hacking? I think, uh, I think there's this book, web application. Uh, uh, damn it, I'm forgetting this book. Let me just search for it. What's the be best hacking book? I think it's it's pretty old, but all the concepts still uh, apply to it. I think it's uh, it's this one, the Web Applications Hackers Handbook. It's a little bit old, but still all of the like uh, things apply to, and the Tangled Web is also pretty good. So I won't like go to like a lot of books, but if you want to read the Tangled Web and the Web Applications Hackers Handbook are the books that you just need to read. But you don't need to read books. But if you want, I have read those two books and actually they helped me a lot, uh, surprisingly. Um, so yeah, so this, this is the lab and I'm gonna go through which vulnerability you should focus on first. Just don't go and do like random things over here just to make sure that you have a street like smooth up path all right so what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna focus on uh, like resources over here so i'm gonna just write portswega learning resources portswega let me just copy this and paste it over here portswega uh, guys are you like actually enjoying this or not i don't know if you guys are actually enjoying it so I don't know if I should like uh, do something else or I think, but I think like a lot of people in the community tab were asking for it. So that's why I decided to do it because I didn't have the time to create a lot of like videos for web application security. So I thought it would be a better idea to just like get it done in one thing and just like give you the pathway of how like I got through of learning all these things. So I think Portswigger is a very uh, good way to get started with it. And the second one is this Hacker 101. And uh, so let's also write that, Hacker 101. All right, so these are the two main uh, websites that you need to go to. And now I'm gonna talk about which vulnerability is in what order you should. Uh... All right, guys, thank you. Hey, I'm listening, Indie Space Astronaut, Aditya, no, it's great, keep going, perfect. And I'll keep going. Yeah, I I'll be making an attachment and I'll be like adding it in the description. Uh, Divish, thank you, you're enjoying it, so I'll just, probably continue it. All right, vulnerabilities. Um, what's the spelling vulnerability? I always mess this up. Let's let's give it a shot. Vulnerability maybe. All right, no errors, perfect. Oh, no errors. All right, <laughs> all right. So vulnerabilities, uh, how like I started going through it is, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna tell you vulnerabilities that I haven't earned money from. So I'm only gonna go through vulnerabilities that I actually have earned money from. So I'm not gonna go to through all the vulnerabilities. There are a lot of vulnerabilities and if you get like, if don't learn everything, don't just try to learn everything. Just focus on one vulnerability at a time 
and then try to implement it on the website that you want to hack all right so vulnerability is the first one and my favorite one all right so my favorite one is this known as the http parameter pollution not because it gives you a lot of money all right so if you uh, go to like hacker 101 let me just open it up uh, over here and if you just click on any program this is just over here so you can see there are like some rewards for it right so normally uh, so this is the low severity medium severity how it affects like some website when you hack it how big the vulnerability is if the vulnerability is low it is known as low severity then medium severity then high severity and then critical severity so HTTP parameter pollution is something known as a low low severity and normally they pay like hundred dollars for it and not a lot of money like hacker one is a very secure website that's why they are paying you like five hundred dollars for it but normally they will get like hundred dollars for it but it's so easy to find it that's like the joy of HTTP parameter pollution all right and it's not uh, like not uh, like everybody knows about it it's like, just like unique so first is HTTP parameter pollution and I'll make sure that I format this properly when I uh, like put it in the description or something uh, so HTTP parameter for right now I'm just gonna just put this over here pollution HTTP parameter pollution and how do what what exactly is parameter uh, like HTTP parameter pollution so basically on any blog so what I do is first of all whenever I want to like whenever I get a new website to hack I just write the name so for example Udemy and don't uh, like you won't find it I've already like gone over here so for example Udemy blog so it's normally like presence present on blog and what happens is when you click it's like uh, so for example it click on like some kind of uh, like a blog article and you click on the share this article right and when you click on this Facebook button instead of what the hacker can do is to the user or the victim that when the victim clicks on this Facebook over here instead of sharing this blog the attackers website or the hackers website gets shared instead of the victims website like this blog should be so that is basically known as the HTTP parameter pollution in the social sharing uh, area all right so this is like how this vulnerability works and this is exactly how I found like three vulnerabilities so what you basically do over here is I'm not gonna like go into how this vulnerability works I'm gonna give you links so that you guys can understand it uh, how this vulnerability works but I'm just gonna give it like a quick demo all right so you basically put a question mark over here in the URL like uh, question mark and and you just write u equals to Google uh, let's say Google we want the hacker wants to show like share google.com instead of this blog all right so I'll just press enter over here and when you like uh, if you send this link like to a victim with this added question mark u equals to google.com the same page opens up but the thing is when you share this article on like Facebook or something the google.com website will be shared instead of uh, this Udemy blog so that is the basic understanding of how obviously Udemy is secure of it so to learn that and to see like how these vulnerabilities works you can just like kind of search for it on Google uh, like hacker one all right so whenever we want to find some reports on a like how people have found this bug like and what kind of money they got from it and just to know like more about this how this works this vulnerability works you can just write the name of the uh, vulnerability and just search for hacker one after it and it's gonna give you all the reports so let's just uh, like see how like some of these uh, bugs are so this is the third one that I'm talking about and this bug was actually on hacker one itself so that was pretty cool so you can see uh, let's see over here which one should we see all, all of these three are uh, let's see this one so you can see the blog is there the blog link is there can you guys see it properly like is it not um, let me just zoom in a little bit maybe so you can see that there is this link of a blog and then what guy does is is adds this question mark and you after and he gives like his website over here and if you send this to a user and he wants to share a link to Facebook the content will change and the Facebook uh, will actually include your link while sharing so that's a vulnerability and it's usually like a low vulnerability uh, even though like $500 have been given over here so I found three of these vulnerabilities and these are like $300 
but if there were like very like easy vulnerabilities to find as soon as like i see a new website uh, i just go to the blog and i like search for it because it's so quick to actually see whether it's working or not uh, so some of the good uh, some of the good resources to learn it obviously this link i think is the best one so i'll just give some links over here to actually learn this vulnerability and let's make sure they are not uh, in bold all right so this is the first link of hacker one and uh, what you can also do is just like google this up let me see what other uh, uh, what other oh this video is also very very good i think like this video is perfect if you want to know more about um, so i'll just add this youtube video too and then there's this third website which i loved uh, let me just see if i can find it uh, how to detect not how to detect you want to hack not to detect um, let's see okay this medium article looks good so let's see if we can uh, find that one actually what I'm gonna do is because I can't show you my inbox I've already sent it to someone so let me just zoom out this a little bit and then just take it away and I'm gonna just put that link in a sec uh, because I can't share the place where I found this vulnerability and um, hopefully I'm not live streaming this otherwise I'm gone but um, yeah let's see uh, yeah actually parapon pollution and um, okay this is the blog let me just paste it over here and this is a pretty good blog I think if you want to learn HTTP parameter pollution you won't find it on port swagger and stuff but I think this is really good so let me just remove this part and it will actually tell you how what HTTP parameter pollution is and you have to make sure that you have learned the web development basics before that otherwise you're not going to understand it and it also requires a little bit of PHP but I don't think you will need to like you need to obsess over it I think while you're reading the article or while watching the video you'll get the hang of what he's talking about all right so the first vulnerability is HTTP parameter pollution and I think you can learn it and start finding it in different websites in less than a day so I'm not going to give you more than like uh, I think I'll give you like maybe like um, how much should I give you like six hours so what I want you to do in six hours is actually go to different blogs and different platforms first of all like watch these or learn these uh, things uh, watch these video so that you guys know what we are talking about and then go and like actually try to find websites that have this vulnerability in the next six hours so th you have like six hours for understanding like this all right then the second vulnerability that and let me actually also add how much money i got from it so like uh, 300 dollars. let me also um, add that so how is the stream going guys till now like uh, i don't know like what the update is i've been focusing too much on this um all right let's see what's what's going on in the chat uh where did i leave the chat all right you guys are listening that's awesome stick to kiwi md yeah like I'll, I'll probably do a couple of more videos of kiwi md we'll uh, see how it goes please get closer to mic i'm sorry like i'll have to like while creating videos i can see how my mic works but over here it's a little bit weird um but i'll, I'll try to get like a little bit closer but you guys won't be able to see my face properly right all right so what else is there kiwi md kiwi md abjit hey man uh, are you an alumni of yeti well lord uh yeah i am but i dropped out in third year so i don't know like uh, whether i'm uh, like alumni or not it's just like I, I dropped out of vit like a couple of years ago so yeah all right so this is the first vulnerability HTTP parameter pollution um, so second vulnerability that we are gonna focus on is uh, it's, it's it's known as XSS all right don't uh, get like really overwhelmed with it and this is the vulnerability that's really really common everywhere all right and actually let's before into going that I want to give you like some kind of a like a tool through which you can uh, watch so for example if we go to our hacker 101 and you go to like this uh, let's see where it is burp suit series so burp suit is a software that you would need to like see the flow of traffic all right how like a website interacts with another website so let me just see if i can open it up for you guys so you can see how it works so let me just um, let's see my bug bounty folder and uh, let me just try and open it up for you guys and um, it's gonna take a little bit of time but we are okay with that let's just uh, run it 
All right, so this is a tool that you'll probably use a lot. Like if you don't use this tool, you are gone. Like you have to use this tool. All right, and just download the, so this tool is known as the Burp Suit tool. All right, so if you just go to Burp Suit and there's a free community edition that you can just download and the free one is fine. Uh, but there's the vulnerability uh, called race condition, which is can be only found using the premium version of this. And I've like earned like a thousand dollars from race conditions. So you can buy the premium version if you want. Uh, like I definitely have benefit from it, but yeah, this you can community edition is also totally fine. So now let me just show to you guys how the, how the burp suit looks. So this is the burp suit and uh, which we'll be using to like analyze traffic and stuff. So for example, if I open up, let me just open up uh, Firefox also just to show you guys. Let me just close some tabs so that my website doesn't hang, like the stream doesn't hang. And let me see. Um, all right, so th like uh, there are different, like just get the community version if you're starting out, don't even focus on buying the professional version. All right, so over here let me just like put a like area of like maybe a tool tools used and this is the only tools tool you are going to use first of all until you feel like comfortable you have earned like some amount of money through it like don't focus on tools just use the community version of burp suit that's how uh, like i got like my first thousand dollars and when i had enough money from hacking then i got the premium version of burp suit and if you can get like, uh, they have like student things and uh, if you can get it somehow for free, like it's on you. All right, so community version of uh, Burp Suit. So this is a tool that we want. And I'll also put in the link of Burp Suit. Burp Suit. All right, so I'm just gonna copy this and paste it over here. So this is the tool that you definitely need. Like uh, there's no like even question whether you need it or not. You definitely need this tool. Let me also just link it. All right. So now let's just show it to you guys what this tool looks like. It, it is this like cool looking tool, right? Uh, which has like all this uh, like hacker stuff over here. But you don't need to like worry too much about like how it works and whatnot. So for example, what we are gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you my screen uh let me just make sure that there's nothing weird over here all right so this is like just my firefox and this is uh, simply my burp suit so what i'm gonna do is first of all i'm gonna make sure that my so this is like the installation process so i'm like do, i'm not gonna go into it you can just like find out how to install it so you can see in uh, over here that there is uh, nothing over here but when i click on let's say for example udemy all right then if I open it up, you can see like all the stuff that goes through like Udemy. There's the host, there's a user agent, and you need to actually see all this stuff before you can uh, hack it. You need to understand what's going on behind the scenes. So now I'm just gonna press on intercept is off and I'm gonna go through like what's happening behind the scenes. And if you go to like uh, see this Udemy, see all the requests are being sent and you can also see the response of what's happening behind the scenes. And uh, if you don't know what, like how, what, what, what is happening over here, make sure you watch the web development series that I mentioned over here in the first one. And then you'll have a, like a better understanding of what's happening. So yeah, Burp Suit is like a software that you can't uh, just get enough of. And when I'm hacking, this is like opened up on the side. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna make sure I close it, turn it off. All right. So first is the HTTP parameter pollution. Make sure you download this burp suit. And then look on YouTube how to use burp suit and stuff like that. And a good way to learn more about burp suit is again Hacker 101. This is uh, this website is gold. Uh, just go to video lessons. So the CTF is also a way to learn it. So there are actual uh, websites over here in the capture the flag and you can hack them and you can learn them like learn how to use the vulnerabilities that they have taught in these videos. So yeah, this, this burp suit over here, burp suit series getting started. And actually I'll also add this uh, over here so that you guys know where to learn it from, where to download it and where to learn it from. So yeah, let's go, let's go through a little bit of a recap of what we have done till now, all right? So first of all, to get started, you choose a target. Uh, you feel happy about yourself. First of all, you need to make sure that you feel, ha feel happy in life 
then uh, you can uh, choose see whether the website offers you a free bug bounty or not okay questions questions a lot of questions uh, let me just go through the questions um, all right please explain host header attack i'm not going to explain anything in this video i'm just going to go through like uh, what's happening uh, behind the scenes and how to learn it but basically host header attack is you see this host name over here you can change it to something else and some websites don't check where the host is coming from and could lead to like different vulnerabilities uh, like uh, one of the vulnerabilities that comes to the like head is http desync attack but let's not go through that right now all right uh, i'm using community version perfect 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 cross site scripting that is xss scrappy tutorial was nice thank you uh, Burf Reader is actually a good tool. That's like the perfect tool to like, I won't use uh, anything else. All right, guys. So I'm, I'm like surprised to see that I have 49 likes. That's pretty awesome, guys. Thank you so much. So yeah, then you go to websites uh, whether to check whether they have a bug bounty program or not. So for example, if my website is Udemy, I go to hackerone.com and I see whether Udemy.com has like a bug bounty program or not. And then you basically learn web development a little bit and don't take more than one week to learn about web development otherwise you'll just go into this hole of uh, learning web development you don't want to go into that and then to learn web application security first just go to these are the two main websites that you know to go to don't go anywhere else just go to these two websites and download the community version of burp suit and you can learn more about burp suit and install it from here and then we come into vulnerabilities all right so first is the http parameter pollution which we, i got 300 dollars and the second is the xss vulnerability or when will be the next video so the next video uh, i've been thinking like on like let's continue or like evmd make a maybe healthcare kind of a android application so i'll probably be working on that and uh, yeah the probably the next video should drop within this week sometime Hey, Busty HD. Hello. All right. So let's go to our next vulnerability. That is XSS. Woo. So this is like a holy grail, like uh, of hacking. Like everybody just goes when they start hacking, they just go and look for XSS. All right. And it's not like uh, that. If you if you find us like someone who, like your friend is developing a website, you might be able to find this vulnerability. But if you look it for like in a professional website, it's not like that easy to find, all right? So, but I have found cross-site vulnerabilities, like very, very easy con like vulnerabilities on uh, cross-site scripting on a lot of famous websites that I'm not allowed to divulge the name of. But yeah, sometimes uh, you just find it and you don't have to like work really hard for it. The second is cross-site scripting and the best way to learn it actually, uh, Web Security Academy, go to Academy and just uh, like uh, this cross site scripting over here. And actually what the vulnerability that I found was over here only. So you just read through what XSS is. So you need a little bit of JavaScript understanding for this, but not a lot. So just go through what this XSS is and do its labs. So doing labs of this is very, very important. So for example, I'll, I'll actually try to do like a lab over here. So for example, if you go into reflected XSS, you read what it is and uh, let's see whether we have the labs for it or not so let me just go and uh, see all right so this is the for example this is the lab which you can go into and you can just like check it out lab reflected xss into html context with nothing encoded and uh, this lab contains a simple cross-site scripting vulnerability i'm just showing you how the lab works and this contains the solution if you click over here you can actually see the solution uh, let me just log in into my uh, uh, Port Swigger account and uh, so yeah you can just like check these labs and like one of these labs actually helped me find a vulnerability in one of the famous websites I didn't have to do a work it was just like there so it's very very highly likely when you go through this lab you'll find some of these vulnerabilities somewhere so let's go back to our uh, lab so this is like a simple blog and the basic of XSS is that if you can execute some kind of JavaScript on a page then it's vulnerability to uh, vulnerable to cross-site scripting so for example here is a blog and you can just search for stuff over here right and we click like search for hey and you can see hey is uh, printed over here so anything that we search is being reflected on the screen all right 
So sometimes it's not encoded. That is, it's when it's sent from uh, the search bar to our backend, it's not getting encoded. Uh, I won't go into what encoding is, just like read that uh, huge uh, lecture. So you can probably over here, we can do, just do something like script, um, alert one and script, like very simple stuff. And you can see this pop-up bar pops up and says one and because I printed this out and also you can see it in the URL over here. So when this pops up, this means that the website is vulnerable to XSS. Uh, so this is a vulnerability that I found like, like a month ago after like learning this XSS. And what I would also recommend is uh, there's this cool, uh, so if you go to twitch.com, there's this, uh, there's this guy called Adam Learns. So what I was doing it, I was just following his video. So there's this cool hacker known as Nahamsek. All right, he like makes a lot of cool stuff. So first of all, you can also follow him if you want. But what I would recommend is uh, just go to Adam Learns. Let's see if I can just find us. This Adam Learns. Oh, he's also like uh, perfect. Uh, we'll just mute him. And I just want to check his previous videos if he still has those videos over here or not. So let's see where are the where are the videos of this guy? Uh, where where can you check the videos, man? Where are the videos, guys? Anybody knows uh, where the video is? This video will stay; it won't go private, dude. So you can just check it anytime you want. Uh, over here, let's just click over here. Stoic, it uh, it will be here. It won't go. Doesn't matter how badly I I mess up in this. Uh, stream it will still be here don't worry about it so yeah if, if i just go through his videos uh, there is this uh, web hacking series over here in which he's also a total beginner and he tries to learn hacking just by using this sports vega website all right let's see if we can uh, so he has removed those videos that's very sad so instead of doing that you can just follow the sports figure that's totally fine so what i would do is i just just go to this reflected sss or just cross site scripting and read through it and try to solve uh, the labs of this thing. So let's just copy and paste this over here. This link, this link is the best. And uh, what other resources on YouTube? I think there's a really, really good video on XSS. Let's just search for it. I think it was by pawn function if I'm not wrong. Yeah, pawn function, XSS explained. So let's also paste that. This is also pretty good for learning. So let's make sure it's formatted properly. And another one is good is from uh, this uh, person. This this Bakrao don't watch like this video. I don't think it's that good. Uh, okay, I don't remember the name of the person who's who was teaching it. But uh, what is the name? Okay, I'll add it later if if I remember it over here. XSS. So just first go and just search for HTTP parameter pollution when you're searching websites then go to XSS and try to learn this and don't like go to different websites and try to deviate from what you're trying to learn. So if you're focusing on XSS, the only time I'm giving you permission to deviate from it if you have done all the apprentice labs of XSS. So don't, there are different kind of labs. So if you go to some like uh, lab over here and cross site scripting and you go to this lab over here, you can see there is this apprentice. So you'll only do like labs that have this apprentice written over here. Don't do like expert or practitioner. It's not going to help you if you are a beginner. So just skip that. Don't even try it. It's going to take a lot of time and to be just useless. All right. So make sure you do that. And then on Hacker 101, actually, there's a very good um, video on uh, XSS, so I'll also recommend that. And there's also this JavaScript for hackers if you wanna go through that. So let's also paste this one in. So let's paste that. Uh, all right. Let's make sure it's linked properly. So now this is XSS. And in the last two months, I've earned about uh, $300 from this too. So I've actually $300 or, uh, so I found, uh, a stored XSS and a reflected XSS. They are two different types. There are three types of XSS. One is reflected, one is stored, and one is DOM XSS. So I haven't found a DOM XSS yet, 
So I'll just put reflected and stored both of them in this. So I'm just gonna put in $600 over here. So this is the second vulnerability that I found, all right? So this is my learning path basically, all right? And then the third one that you want to learn, let me just drink some water. Like speaking a lot makes me thirsty. Live Overflow has like uh, videos, but I don't think, uh, I think it was KT PhD. KT PhD had these, uh, I think it was KT PhD or something. Uh, KT PhD hacking, maybe something like that. Oh, inside a PHP. Perfect. Find it. Found it. Found it. Uh, yeah. Thank you for reminding me when you wrote live overflow, I was kind of like able to remember it. So if I go and type in XSS insider, and if you guys have any resources, feel free to like put them in the chat and I'll just later add them inside. Finding your first bug. So she has a lot of cool things uh, for like uh, beginners. So I'll probably like go and check out this video too. And XSS has a lot of resources. So guys don't deviate from these four links. Otherwise it's gonna suck up all your time and you're not gonna learn anything. So just focus on these four videos, starting with this sports figure, reading about a little bit. And then when you get bored, you can watch these two, three videos and then go to sports figure again. But just stick to sports figure like is the authority, authority over here. Make sure you go through it. All right, then the third web, the third thing I learned was course. Uh, so I, I won't go into course like explaining it, what's, what it is, but basically cross, or, cross origin uh, sharing, resource sharing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very like weird bug uh, if you don't know how the web works, but it's also a very interesting work, bug. And you kind of understand like if you, if I open up this up, if you see like some websites have this origin. So if, if I can find it in some of these, uh, uh, let's see, origin, origin. Okay, it's not here in some websites. There is this origin header. These are basically known as the headers. So let me just send it to repeater and send it again. So for example, it will kind of, I'll just give you an example of how it will look. Dude, write the write-ups here. I don't know what you mean. Uh, origin, so some of the websites have just have this origin over here and this like, uh, for example, Udemy.com. So basically this origin, it understands like how cross origin sharing works, how you can implement it on your own website. So even if you're like a web developer, like learning about course, like is one of the great things you can do because not a lot of web developers actually know about this course. And previously, like I've developed some websites in which I haven't used this uh, course. I didn't know about it. And like later when I got into web application security, I realized, oh, this is also vulnerability and I can get hacked through it. Or some of the information can be leaked through it. So yeah, learning this course is the second thing that you need to go into. And uh, let me just, uh, and we are also going to learn it through Portsugar Academy. I think this is the best way to learn it. So there is this course over here. So let me just go and copy and paste this uh, over here. Make sure everything looks amazing. Make it a little bit smaller, Portsugar. And uh, yeah, just stick to this one. You don't need to like do a lot. And actually one thing I forgot, even before course, you need to add like a CSRF. If you're doing excesses, you need to add CSRF. Like that's for, uh, that you have to just do it. <laughs> so CSRF, I haven't been able to find a CSRF till now, uh, but I think this is one of the like basic things. If you want, if you know excesses, you should also know CSRF. Uh, so if you use Django, you know that, or oh, the write-ups or the bug, bug, bug reports that I filed, so most of the bug reports that I have, I can write the write-ups, but they are from like private, uh, private companies. So, and they don't allow me to divulge like the information. So what I can do is that I can write a write-up, but instead of, for example, if I hack on some random.com, for example, let's say I hack on facebook.com, just example, then I can put in like, uh, I found this website on like uh, some random.com and then I can write the write-up. Maybe I can do it like that. Uh, so I'll think about it, like writing the write-ups takes a lot of time and I don't know if we have enough audience for learning about web hacking. I think most of our audience is interested in uh, like learning about Python and I love teaching Python. This is just like an extra thing I'm doing for you guys. All right. 
Um, so CSRF is amazing and uh, you'll find a new like face of how web works if you like understand CSRF. So and if you are into Django, like there are a lot of CSRF tokens when you are creating Django. So for example, uh, if I just search for Django, C, C, so every form that you submit has the CSRF token that you need to add before even submitting your uh, form. So a lot of websites use like these, uh, like uh, like Django, Laravel, or they use like Spring Framework in which adding the CSRF token is like necessary. Otherwise your form is not going to work. So that's why like some of the websites have, uh, not a lot of websites have the CSRF vulnerability, but still some of the websites have it and you need to learn it. I think this is the proper like way to, if you want to like uh, make sure you understand it properly. Um, I'll just put in the link of how to learn CSRF, then you can just learn it. So CSRF is also over here. And after XSS, this is uh, what probably I would recommend. This is how, this is the pathway of what I have gone through. So I'm just teaching it to you guys, like what I have gone through. Uh, you don't need to follow it. I'm not like an expert or anything in this. Uh, Python I'm expert in. Python I can do anything in, but this one I, I'm not an expert. But yeah, this is the knowledge that I have that I want to share with you guys. So CSRF, uh, I'll just put in that, no, I haven't made like any money through it. So I'm just gonna put in like zero dollars, sadly. Um, so yeah, CSRF, and then you have to learn like course. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is over here, so I, so course is a very amazing vulnerability and you can find some like medium severity or high severity in course, but I have been only be able to find like a hundred dollar vulnerability. So I'll just put like hundred dollars over here. And let me just uh, make sure that looks good. Is the font different of these things? What's, what's happening? Let me just, um, okay, I'll fix, fix this after the stream, no worries. All right, so now I'm just gonna go to our fifth vulnerability. And uh, this one is authentication, basically. So authentication is, uh, how do I explain it? It's very, very weird. So for example, there is a way a website is structured. There are something known as, uh, I'm not gonna explain it to you actually. Let's just, because it's too difficult to explain just like in a very short way because it's a very lengthy explanation, but somehow you're able to bypass authentication mechanisms. So for example, let's say I have a, I have some kind of data. So I have an account. So for example, let's say I have an account over here. You can see this URL and it has this uh, user ID equals to one, two, three, four. And my web, my profile is opening. That is only private. This profile is just opening for me. And this is my user ID that has been created for this Google. But what if I change this two to a three? And this is basically known as an IDOT vulnerability and also an authentication vulnerability. So there are a lot of websites that don't actually see uh, these uh, problems. And I found a lot of these uh, IDORs before. And uh, actually I found a couple of IDORs on Udemy also. But I'm, And it was a, such a crazy, crazy vulnerability. Like uh, I can't tell it to you guys, but it was super. And just by changing this number, it was this crazy. But um, Nia Nityam Gandhi, no replies, bye. <laughs> All right, man, bye, see ya. All right, so uh, I'll just check in like uh, IDOR, yeah, IDOR uh, and authentication. I'll just write authentication two over here. IDOR and authentication. And uh, I think IDOR is something that you can just learn from YouTube. It's like a very easy kind of a vulnerability. Just, I'm just gonna copy this and paste this over here. I don't authentication. It's it's super hot by the way. Uh, where I it's not super hot. It's just super humid, and because I can't use the fan because of the microphone, I'm sweating like crazy. Let me just use some of my tal tal op. But anyways, so this is authentication idol. And the second thing that I would recommend is uh, going through obviously over here, and there is this access control. This goes into like uh, authentication vulnerabilities. So I'll also go through that. Uh, let me make sure that it looks good. All right, so this is IDOR and authentication. This is course. So after IDOR and authentication, I think I have earned like uh, about $400 from it. I think I found like two vulnerabilities. 
Now actually not 400, I think I've earned 300 dollars. One vulnerability was a duplicate, otherwise I would have earned more from it. But yeah, and like my favorite vulnerability, all right? So this is the last vulnerability that I found that I know about. Uh, it's known as the race condition. This is like my favorite vulnerability. And I want like a thousand dollars from it. And it's just like so fun to like, so easy to do. And so fun to like, just watch this vulnerability come into action. And this actually requires a little bit of a curving, uh, learning curve. So I'll just put in race condition. And it's actually a little bit like complicated to learn. Like where will you learn it from? It's very difficult to learn it. But what I would do is, uh, so just first of all, first, first things first, just read what a race condition is. It's basically a concurrency problem uh, in coding. That's a very like uh, complicating, complicated problem to have. Let me just like uh, race condition, you have YouTube bug bounty maybe, and we can get some good, um, good race conditions example. I think this is a very good example of race conditions. So I'll just paste this one. I've watched this video before, so I know it's pretty good. And this is uh, this software Turbo Intruder. Without this, you can't really use uh, uh, race conditions. And it has also like a very good video on uh, Turbo Intruder embracing the billion request attack. It, it has like this amazing uh, video. So also watch this video and you'll have a better understanding of how a race condition works. And I think uh, is it because it's so complicated and there are not a lot of good videos. Ah, CSRF token OP speaker. Yeah. <laughs> Aditya Pipe Thorn. So this guy, I know like when I had like 200 subscribers or something, he was, he was still on my channel. So I know Aditya Python has been there for a like really, really long, long time. So like, thank you so much, man, for hanging around. And yeah. So yeah, race conditions and I have earned like a thousand dollars from it. So this is like my like go to vulnerability. Like when I try to one I found on a voting system uh, where you can just vote unlimited votes. You can give unlimited votes using this race conditions. And second thing was I found that you could um, like have the option where you could register for company domains. And using this, I could even like only one company domain was allowed to be registered and I could like uh, register like thousands of company domains. So it was a big loss to the company and they gave me like $500 for each of the vulnerabilities. So race conditions, whenever I see, and I recently uh, recently found like two more of them. So I think soon this month is gonna be $2,000 just by race condition. So yeah, the, the turbo intruder you have to use and this one requires burp suit professional. So like, yeah, this is one of the bad things about it. And it takes like a little bit of time to get the hang of how this works. So Burp Suit Professional is required. You absolutely need it. So yeah, this is basically uh, like in short what I've done till now in web application security. So whenever I open up a website, uh, is, is the video lagging? I hope not. People, is the, is the video lagging? Okay, I, I'm hoping it's not because YouTube is telling me it's lagging a little bit. But anyway, this, this, these are the vulnerabilities that I've learned till now. So my next things that I want to learn, uh, I'm just going to write over here, have to learn. I have learned SSRF, but I've not been able to find any SSRF vulnerabilities. And all the vulnerabilities I'm talking about, you can like actually find them on uh, like port figure and stuff over here. So SSRF is something and XSC is also, so these are critical vulnerabilities. If you find them, you get like $5,000 and stuff. But sadly, I haven't been able to find like XSC and SSRF. And this is the HTTP uh, desync uh, request. This also, you get a lot of money for it. Insecure deserialization is a new thing that they have uh, released. Web cache poisoning is also pretty interesting. And I know like most of these, how these things work, but I've not been able to find like vulnerabilities on them. So SSRF, XSE. Um, so these six vulnerabilities are the basic vulnerabilities that you absolutely need to learn. After that, you can just go into whatever you want. Then SSRF, XXE, and um, and yeah, you can also watch these videos are pretty good. File inclusion. I, I don't think you should watch these videos because to be honest, they like never come into handy. So the web in depth, XSS and authorization is pretty good, burp suit. It's pretty good. I've done a little bit of Android hacking also. Uh, it's very interesting how Android web hacking works. 
uh, but yeah so what we are doing yeah xsrf xxe and let me just open up my ports figure again over here and uh, i don't know like i think i think i just want to focus on these vulnerabilities first and i want to like find a dom based xss in future somewhere because i'm just like i'm finding too many race conditions that's the thing i'm just like such an expert in race conditions now csrf uh, cs uh, crlf uh, i'm just messing it up c crlf injection is also something but i've never found it i've looked into it how it works and stuff but i've never like gone too much into depth of it but yeah so these are the things that i will have to learn and yeah guys so that is pretty much pretty much it if you guys um, have any questions feel free to ask me now i'm just gonna go like a and i'll i'll add some more resources over here it's just my throat is a little bit tired and because i have to think at the same time and uh, write at the same time and do stuff so just ask me questions for the next like at least some time i'll just be answering questions about hacking or anything that you have because this is my first live stream so feel free to ask me any kind of questions or just like tell me that this stream sucked whatever you want to do Just feel free to like do anything so yeah let's just check uh, a little bit off so the stream is not lagging that's fine some people are saying it is which is very sad but most of the people are saying it's not so that's good and uh, yeah let's just check some uh, like um, course unsafe headers yeah course is basically unsafe headers you can mess up with origins um, and yeah I'm gonna be thank you for time I'm looking forward to learning uh, thank you so much no integrity isn't just for Europe like even I have registered on integrity you can if you have an Indian uh, or from any other nationality you can even like make account over there where I can get this doc I'll be adding this doc in the description of this video so you can get it from there and like uh, I don't know if I should make videos on these vulnerabilities or not because this is like just a Python based like channel right so these are the vulnerabilities that like you can use python in some of them so i basically write tools i write chrome extensions for myself when i try to find these vulnerabilities but they are not necessarily all the time in python so i don't know if i should like make actually a video series on this or not um yeah so all right where can go uh, Tell us about our, your career from scratch. All right, all right, this is story time. Story time with Athre Bhatt. All right, so I'll go into like uh, story time. Uh, so what, okay, so I was in college, VIT college about like two, three uh, years ago. And what happened was, okay, don't tell this to my parents, all right. But what happened was, uh, I was in third year and I was just like, I, I, like I couldn't figure out what to do with my life because I always knew that I wanted to create something all right I wanted to do something so in college only I started like uh, like freelancing just writing articles and I found that I could earn like hundred dollars in like 30 days if I kept working like writing articles I found this like website so I was in like third year of my college so yeah I like a lot of work very little money but I realized that I could at least earn money right so this was the first thing and then in my third year it's just i just hit a low point so i was in the library and i was reading this python book and i realized and there was this library card in the book and it showed all the people that had taken the book before me and i was sitting in the library and i was thinking if all i'm doing i'm gonna do all the things that these people have done i'm gonna be at the same place where these people are get a job somewhere and uh I had gotten a job before and I just didn't like the concept of it. So I just wanted to create some, my sole desire was to create something on my own. That's pretty much it. So I just wanted to create something. So I was into a couple of like clubs at my college, like IEEE and I used to do like a lot of um, like teaching over there a little bit, just telling to my members and stuff. guys, uh, it just, it just disconnected. Wait, is it still? Still lagging, huh? Alright, just tell me when the lagging stops. So that I can continue or... Uh, 
a prob or if it was continues to lag, I'll end up like my live story sometime now, uh, sometime else. All right, so it's working now. All right, perfect. So in my third year, what I decided to do was uh, I, there was this startup which I can't divulge the name of it, but it was very small back then, and it has become really really huge now. So I just uh, I took out one month. And uh, I just like try to find security vulnerabilities on that website first of all, and I also try to find vulnerabilities on Pornhub.com. I know it's weird, but on Pornhub.com I couldn't even find a single vulnerability because I'm such a noob at like hacking, I couldn't find anything over there. But I wanted my name to be it's in its hall of fame and stuff, right? But like sadly I couldn't find. Maybe like uh, I should give it a try again. But whatever. So I like I focused on the startup because I wanted to get an internship over there after dropping out because who's gonna give a job to a person who's just in third year hasn't passed out, right? So, <laughs> so I just uh, what I did was I focused on that one website and found five vulnerabilities on that website and I could do like literally anything with that website. So I dropped out, took my baggage, told my friends, was really afraid. And then I just came to like freaking Bangalore, the Silicon Valley of India, and I knew Bangalore was the place to go because like if you want to start something, you come to Bangalore. If you want to go into the movie industry, you go to Mumbai. If you wanna, yeah. So that's pretty much it. So I just came to like uh, Bangalore, and I went to the founder directly. Like no shame, I just packed my bags and came to the Bangalore and talked to the founder. And he gave me like some like some money for like finding these vulnerabilities. <laughs> I know it's pretty crazy, right? But that's how my story like went, and it's pretty crazy like uh, how it went. But anyways, uh, so I did that. I came to Bangalore, and uh, so I went to the startup founder, and he was like, "Dude, what are you doing over here? Aren't you like a college student?" I was like, "I dropped out." Like a full like thug life. <laughs> I had like too much ego back then. Oh, I know all this. I know HTML. I know CSS. And, like thug life, I just went to him. Oh man, is it lagging again? Damn it! My story is getting disturbed. Story time by Build with Python is getting disturbed. Let me just check whether it's lagging still or not. I don't think it's lagging now, so it's, it's. I'll just continue continue the story. So yeah, I just went to okay, perfect. So I just went to the founder and I asked him, uh, he give me an internship. So he told me, why do you want an internship? If you are so good at coding, just start your own thing. So like, yeah, but in college I get really depressed because there's no other guy like me who wants to like get into like start a business and stuff like that. So he connected me with this random guy called Karthik, revealing his. Uh, name and he was like a lot older than me so i was like 21 or something so he was a lot older than me uh, so i went and talked to this guy but i didn't, didn't have any money in my account right i had like uh, like 10k in my account 10000 10000 rupees which is equal to like maybe 130 dollars or something so i just went and talked to this random guy called karthik because he was recommended by the ceo of the startup and he heard my story and he looked at me he was like oh, you already dropped out can't you go back? I was like, no. So I want to start my own thing. Uh, so he was like, okay, do one thing. Just come to my apartment. All right, just come to my apartment and you can stay there for free. And he was a head of a co-working space in Bangalore called Investopad. And he was like, you can even work there for free. So I had a lot of help from like people of Bangalore. People of Bangalore are very, very nice. So I had a lot of help from there. Which VIT, I was in VIT Vellore. Uh, yeah, so I talked uh, to this random guy called Karthik. All right, I'll tell you more of the story if it's funny. So he was like, okay, come to my house. And I was like, okay, I'm 21. I haven't traveled a lot in this world, all right? So I'm afraid. Fuck, like I'm gonna go to this random person's guy, but I didn't have any choice. I was looking at the small food stall and thinking like with 20 rupees, I'll eat food all day. Like in 20 rupees, like I'll have the dinner and stuff. And it had a like small, like tailor stall kind of a thing, which they gave food. So like, I'll get my food from there, like 20 rupees a day and I'll be fine. I'll figure something out. And I still haven't told my parents yet, by the way, uh, by that time. So I went to this random person's house and I found out that I had two other roommates. So I had to sleep in the lobby. 
and there was this like futon kind of a thing it's like sofa slash small bed kind of a thing over there and i just slept over there for like uh, a long time and these guys these two one of the guys worked at uh, facebook and uh, one of the guys had his own company a travel company and one of these guys was a head of a investor pad uh, company which uh, invests in other companies and had a co-working space so i could go there and work for free so yeah i did that and uh, i started like freelancing and the first month i uh, i never still remember he didn't ask for rent or anything but i was so afraid like how am i going to pay the freaking rent right hey rahul so yeah i did that so i was totally afraid and the first month i still remember i made like 10 dollars from uh, like creating like like a stupid course on augmented reality but it was really bad <laughs> so i did that and uh, I still remember that ten dollars is the best ten dollars I've ever earned in my life. Uh, I don't know whether it's Elric's incubator or not, but I don't know. I was there, so those ten dollars, like were the when you earn the first money with your hard work in your life, I think that's the best thing you can do. It's the best feeling. So I started uh, slowly and slowly. I increased my income. and i decided i won't go back to my college if i started earning 20000 rupees per month in 6 months if i can go from 0 to 20000 rupees or 20000 rupees is basically 300 dollars and it's more than enough to survive in india at least so i decided when i get to 300 dollars i'm not going to go back to college if i can earn that much all right so by the end of 6 month i was able to earn that much all right so i was like okay now this is settled and then i started to create a startup Uh, called anupinion.com and uh, which basically helped youtubers so actually i'll show it to you guys uh, i think it's still live but i'm not sure so let's actually search for uh, anupinion let's see if it's still live anupinion.com this is like uh, like one of my like child this is how i learned basically django by creating this website uh, so i was like i'm going to create this startup if this startup works out good if this startup doesn't work out at least i'm going to learn django right so that was my idea so let's see if it's still up i am not sure if it's still up or not because i created this like 2 3 years ago let's see let's search for an opinion it's taking a long time but all right so this is this this is it this is this is basically the first <laughs> website that i created using django and by the way this is a lot of security vulnerabilities this is like so insecure <laughs> this is totally insecure so basically you can get reviews on your youtube videos from other people who created youtube videos all right so that was the idea i created this website i gained a like 2000 users or something like in 2 3 months all right but i still wasn't earning any money through it but it was like i was getting really good feedback all right but then after some time like uh, i realized No, I don't know Tamil. I only know English and Hindi. I know like a little bit of Tamil, like uh, uh, okay, like uh, Akka Anna. I don't know if that's Tamil, but that's what I used to call like uh, people in uh, Bellor, Akka Anna, sister and brother. So, anyways, uh, I created this website, and you can just like uh, if you want, you can have a look through it. And the, here's the IDOR. If you probably like go to like two or something, it will show you something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there are probably like a lot of vulnerabilities on this website, but don't don't try to freaking hack it, damn you. <laughs> All right. Find my first idol here. I don't know, man. I, maybe I can like give like a demo on this website itself. But a lot of people still use it surprisingly. So you can see, I haven't like even published or done anything for marketing of this website in like two, three, like at least one, two years. but somehow like some people find it and they like just post stuff over here and uh, but because i wasn't a youtuber right i wasn't a youtuber so i was like even though i have this startup i don't have the experience of having this startup like how youtube works i don't really know right so what i did was i did like a youtube meetup i found like so i know a lot of good youtubers in bangalore so i found a like like amazing youtubers in bangalore and held meet up every month and like it was a lot of fun and till then like you have to notice i still haven't created a youtube channel till then i'm like it's fine even if i don't have a youtube channel it's chill all right but as after some time i started to realize oh 
I actually need to have a YouTube channel. And uh, so I went into that. I created a YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, so I created my YouTube channel. My first series was Kinter. Um, and by the way, like this was still when I was living with those guys who had taken me in. But after some time, the guys got married and I went to their marriage actually. You know, the guys, the Karthik guy which took me in when I first dropped out and came to Bangalore. This guys, I uh, actually went to like two of those guys marriages, marriages this year itself. So that's pretty crazy. If I hadn't dropped out, I wouldn't have gone to their marriages. And like I met these and these are the like, these guys are my mentors. Uh, like they help me at every point if I need any kind of help like at what direction to go. Uh, so right now I'm just focusing on my YouTube channel and so like hopefully soon I can like build up like some kind of a website like buildwithpython.com and uh, like put up some courses over there, just like publish all cool videos. So I have a lot of like cool ideas of what more we can publish on uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel. So yeah, the idea is to just, just now I'm just gonna like keep freaking focusing on uh, like this YouTube channel. That's That's my aim and that's my goal. That's pretty much it. Django tutorial, this, this actually Django is three right now, right? When Django was 1.11, then I actually created this unopinion.com. So you can think how old it is. And uh, I probably have to update it. Now that I'm like, one of my like life goals is, I know this website has potential. So I'm gonna work on this website a little bit more because this website got a lot of like, so uh, like a woman messaged me about this website and she was saying he, like uh, my husband doesn't support me on creating my YouTube channel. Your website has helped me like getting support from other people. So like I was really happy about that, that like this website is actually helping people out. And actually I got like really emotional when that first uh, like I, like some woman like uh, emailed me about this. And a lot of you guys like have like very, very good remembering, like good comments on my YouTube channel. And mostly like all of them are positive. So when I see like people saying like, hey, I got hate comments, I'm like, no. On my YouTube channel, it's all like fun. Uh, I've been knowing Aditya Python for a long time. It's, fun. it's been fun with him. A, a lot of you guys I see here are, have been for a long time. A lot of you new guys are also welcome. Uh, so yeah, any other questions? This is a pretty long answer, but basically what happened was I did that, I created my YouTube channel. And yeah, I'm still friends with those guys, although I'm living with my, like on my own now, but still, uh, yeah, the woman emailing me was like a amazing feeling. Yeah, true. So any other questions, guys? That was my life story in short. And by the way, don't tell my parents. It's been two, two years, two, three years, but I still haven't told them <laughs> that I dropped out. They freaking think like, <laughs> they think that uh, like I graduated from <laughs> college and then I started my startup. But they are very strict that way. I hope this video doesn't go viral and it won't go viral probably just have like 40 viewers so i have to scrape on amazon bro i've already made a video on scrapping amazon just go through it and you have to do a little bit of work yourself bro like not everything i can teach in videos i have limited amount of time limited amount of things i can teach but i try to be as concise as possible uh, so if you you put in a little bit of more of your work you can uh, like figure out how to scrap things from amazon but for yeah that's pretty much it any other questions guys do continue this live series i will i will uh, just give me some ideas of what live series i can do more and i'll continue doing it will you make video in python chrome extension i don't even know if a chrome extension can be made in python i think the best way to make a chrome and firefox extensions which i made a lot uh are best done in javascript yeah Please don't make me famous. <laughs> uh, if your parents are so strict, how did you even gather the courage to drop out? I mean, dude, think about it. Like, I mean, I always realized that I wanted to do my own thing. So it wasn't that difficult of a decision. Like all my parents supported me and I'm kind of a guy who like loves taking a risk. I think more the, the, the risk you take in your life, the further you get. Otherwise, you're just going to go too slow. I don't want to go too slow. <laughs> Life in the fast lane. So <laughs> that's why like, I like taking risks. Like that's pretty much it. Anything that's risky, uh, like, like makes my heart beat a little bit more. I love doing it. So yeah, my parents are strict, but I still gathered like somehow like it, 
I was like, I need to drop out, so I dropped out. Data structures and algorithms, that one I need. Data structures and algorithms. Man, data structures and algorithms, I think I can do that series, but it's such like a, like a college type of a thing, right? Like learn sorting, learn data. I think like I can do like a machine learning series, machine learning algorithms, that's gonna be fun. Even for me, because like just explaining algorithms now, it's not gonna be that much fun for me. And I also wanted to make fun for uh, you guys and also for me, right? So that's the idea. So I'm probably gonna be like making machine learning. Do a damn vulnerability live series. I don't know what a damn vulnerability is. It sounds like crazy vulnerability, damn vulnerability. Is there any automated tool for image annotation? Google bro, create your own tool bro in Python. Use Python to create your own tool. Probably you will need to use something like OpenCV or something, uh, or Pillow for image annotation. For data science, what should I learn first? NumPy, Pandas, or Django Flask by Shivam Rai? Bro, I think you need to get started with NumPy. I think uh, if you are getting into web, you don't need, this is like two different things. If you're going with web development, you should probably learn Django Flask first. If you're going for machine learning, you should probably learn NumPy, Pandas first. But still, don't go too much depth into it. Learn a little bit. Don't be like, oh, I'm gonna become like a pandas expert. Don't do that. Just learn a little bit. All right. Um, what else is there? Let's see. Bro, 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 bro. Create video on microservices and deployment. Go getting a lot of video recommendations. Make this, make this. Came from Samay stream. You super chatted there. Thank you so much, bro. Yeah, he's a pretty good chess player. And I watched his comedian's uh, stream today, so yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, after that only I decided to like live stream. Um, <laughs> okay, out of context, but anyway, Justin Bieber or Ed Sheeran. Bro, Ed Sheeran any day. I mean, some of the songs I like of Justin Bieber, a lot of people like, uh, Baby is so bad. I'm like, okay, I'll, if it's playing somewhere, I'll listen to it, I'm like, okay, baby, it's fine. With Ed Sheeran, you can just like listen to it anytime you want and you'll feel good. You'll be like, oh, my life is set. And sometimes you can listen to his love songs and like, oh, I can feel the heartbreak. So that's the thing. So Ed Sheeran any day, but I don't think like I'll diss on Justin Bieber. Uh, and I think he's getting his life together and stuff. So that's pretty chill. Huh. All right. Yeah, NumPy Pandas any day. Um, uh, Maze, OpenCV is perfect. Damn vulnerability web applications that come along with Kali. Uh, so yeah, there are some web applications. Maybe I can do that, but depends upon how this video goes and what kind of response we receive. Guys, please like this video if you actually like the information and you like talking to me. Like, if you give more likes, it gets to more people. So that's uh, that's important for this video also. So if you like it, just give it a like. And um, how much total experience you have now in what? Like uh, in Python, I'm like a freaking like expert, but. In web backing, like I'll probably say, like there's a long way to go. All right, um, fingerprinting in Python. Uh, what is fingerprinting in Python? Just get your finger cut and then print it out. <laughs> in which startup you work? I don't work in any startup right now. I'm just focusing on YouTube and trying it to make it a, like a full fledged business. And when I have like decent subscribers on YouTube, I want to get back to working on Unopinion. I really like, uh, I really like uh, making it alive again. I think this this startup has potential. Uh, not you can't really call it a startup, but this this I like what this project is. So I like to focus on this. What is your Instagram account? My Instagram account is Bhat Athreya. I think to I think it's uh, Instagram dot com slash Bhat Athreya. I'm not wrong. Uh, let's see. I think it's just Bhad Atria. Yeah, just just find that. What else? Post this to learn hacking. Uh, I'll see, man. But like, it's not like an expert thing, so I don't know. Like, I'm not an expert in web hacking, so I don't know if I should actually post it or not. Um, what else? What else is there, guys? Roadmap for data science. I think uh, I'll put up a video series for data science. But if you want to get started with it, uh, I'll probably recommend Coursera. Coursera has a good, I know there are a lot of like uh, videos on data science, where to get started from. But I think if you take a course on Coursera, first of all, they also give you like, uh, first of all, the guy teaching it is like really good. You can understand very basic concepts from Coursera in a very good way. 
and also let me just remove my Instagram. Why is it just there? Um, let me actually just open this Python thing up. All right, so what you can do is uh, just go to Coursera and get a course from there. They also give you a certificate. So that's like a motivation to also learn it. So that's, that's fun. Yeah, what else? Anything else or should I end the stream? Guys, it's been one hour, uh, 30 minutes. I think it was a good starting stream. I really enjoyed like talking to you guys. Uh, <laughs> if startup, will you hire me? Uh, <laughs> I don't know you man, but yeah, probably if you're good. So yeah, guys, this is pretty much it. I'll share the link of what uh, this, what doc I made. I'll make sure that I refine it a little bit and give a more like a description of what each vulnerability is. And then I'll share it on the community tab or something so that you guys can get it properly. Like make sure that it looks good. Maybe make it like a PDF or something. Um, what's my Twitter? I think it's also Bhat Atreya, but I think you have, have a better response if you message me on Instagram. On Twitter, so one thing great for learning web hacking is also like just going to Twitter and looking for like uh, people who do web, web security stuff. So for example, if you go to my Twitter, you'll find a lot of people that I follow that are into web application security. And that's how you learn. So you know this rule, you surround yourself with five people who what, uh, of what you want to become. So for example, you can see like, I'm following all these people who, who are doing like, uh, like hacking stuff, web hacking stuff. So you also need to follow these kind of people or do in anything. Like for example, if you want to become better at Python, you just follow people like me who are good at Python and you'll get the motivation to learn more about Python. Um, so yeah, guys, that is pretty much it. Peace out. Have been like, next time I think we'll have a Django 2.0, oh, sorry, 3.1 or something. And we'll create a Django website. How does that sound? So we'll create that Django website and uh, yeah guys, this is pretty much it. I'll see you. Follow everyone that sounds like follow. Is that true? All right guys, that's pretty much it. I'll end the live stream now. Thank you so much. Peace out. Let me just go.